Okay, folks, Alex Forrest here vlogging to you on a grim and grey Sunday morning in Warsaw, Poland. Now, this is a texting series. It's like a texting surgery. And throughout the course of the next six, perhaps even a dozen uh, vlogs, I'm going to be drilling into uh, the texting game, giving you the, the silver bullets of wisdom insofar as playing with your uh, phone is concerned or uh, Facebooking and whatsapping etc 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 now the, the very first thing i want to say is you may be thinking well you know isn't it really quite simple either you've made a good interaction with a girl on the street you've got a number she likes you she doesn't texting is just you know setting up the date and getting her out pretty straightforward isn't it why all this complication why go into such uh, you know detail in regards texting isn't it all a bit anal and actually counterproductive well uh, I think the thing to say is look as a general rule yeah uh, the most important thing to be bearing in mind is texting is simply a way of getting a girl out on a date so your focus should always be moving the uh, texting forward to a date. Uh, it's also, I think, worth uh, remembering that a corollary, it's a fancy word, isn't it? A corollary of this is you need to know where you are in the sort of sequence. You need to know where you stand with the girl. And it means she could be in a variety of places. She could be absolutely positive and just sort of ready to get out on a date, in which case you don't need that many, many texts and you can kind of quite quickly get to the date request. You, she may be a classic maybe girl and you actually have got some more work to do. Uh, for whatever reason in, in the street, uh, she perhaps has external factors in her life and might have nothing to do with uh, what you did. But for whatever reason, she's not, you know, uh, going to come out on a date instantly. And don't forget, you know, men are sort of route one animals when it comes to basics of nature. Ugh. They want to get to the destination as quickly as possible and cross that finishing line, which means getting her out, getting a number, getting her out on a date. Uh, girls, uh, bless them, are more beautiful and magical creatures and they enjoy the romantic sort of dance for its own sake. And it's not a bad idea if you start to learn to enjoy the dating sequence and even the texting sequence for its own sake rather than a sort of a, frustra a frustrating obstacle that you've got to get over. Try not to think of it as an assault course. Try to think of it as like you are, you know, dancing a dance. Remember, everything that I say in this series of vlogs should be, this should be the touchstone, you know, to which you should refer when you've got any doubts or question marks over anything that I'm saying. Okay, you know, make sure that you're moving it forward. Yeah, you're not just standing still and engaging in a, a texting vortex or vacuum that just goes round and round in circles for ages. Make sure you're moving it forward um, because that's an attractive quality. And, and also, uh, just remember, you need to be able to sort of stand back and gauge where you are in the interaction. And I think this is why buddies are so helpful. You know, we're so kind of reluctant to show our phones to our mates, aren't we? You know, I'm not talking about general mates and friends, I'm talking about guys who are also doing this. Even with those guys, we're reluctant because we don't want to take the pain or the criticism. And I think, you know, one of the biggest things that we need to sort of learn and to suck up is taking the blows. Ouch, you, that's an idiotic thing that you said there. Obviously, 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 find a guy who's actually experiencing this stuff for asking for advice. But in a way, any advice is better than uh, you no know, advice at all because it gives you something to work with. And the truth is you live in a little bit of a, you know, you live in your own head when you're doing the, uh, when you're texting girls. And uh, I remember the, the famous uh, dodgy Nick Krauser uh, saying that if you can put that text up on a jumbotron at like in Leicester Square or Times Square and you don't feel embarrassed about it, then send the text. So I think it's very good to use Buddy's Touchstone in order to be able to help you gauge 
where you are in, in the interaction and what then needs to be done. Okay, uh, now I'm just going to give you the opener really uh, for this introductory vlog and uh, you know here is a, an example of an opener and it's a classic one that I was taught when I first started doing this stuff with daygame.com, the company that unfortunately no longer exists. Uh, I did a boot camp with them and it's just a simple, very effective text that you can just send and you don't then need to worry about, you know, getting it right. It's just, uh, I use that 70% of the time. I do actually now use this text a little bit more. Um, it kind of depends on how the interaction went. If I want to give it a little bit more because the interaction was, was a bit brief, I'll send the first one. You know, if it's a strong interaction, I'll just keep it short. Keeping it short as you possibly can is a good general rule when it comes to, uh, to texting. Um, so those are the two opening texts. I think a really good thing is if you can put in some callback humour. And this really is down to how the interaction went. What I find myself doing now is when we're doing the phone thing at the end of the interaction, it's agreed to give me, give me a number. I'd say, oh, I'm gonna, now what nickname shall I give you? And I asked that to myself as much as to her. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was teasing a girl for designing, uh, sorry, for choreographing her wardrobe, because she was very elegantly dressed, with the upholstery in a Cafe Nero, okay, because it was just a match of colours, it was a silly tease. But it worked very well, got her laughing. So at the end, I said, what, am I, what nickname am I going to give you? Fashion Sofa Girl. Now, when it then comes to texting, you've got a lovely little bit of callback humour. Hey there, fashion sofa girl, you know, um, winky face, and then you run the rest of the opener text. Your little weasel mind will tell you that there are all sorts of other texts you should be sending, you know, going from the mundane and logical and boring, i.e. did you buy that courgette after we said goodbye, um, you know, to the ridiculous, i.e. sending her a dick pic or something, you know, just keep it uh, simple and make it easy on yourself and low energy and low investment by you by just sending a simple, simple opener text and these are the two texts that I use and I just I don't need, never need to worry um, that it's that it's it's me or it's my text. If she doesn't get back after that text, then fine, it's going nowhere. I don't need to worry about whether or not I got the texting right. If that makes sense. And just to, to summarise this whole texting business, look, you know, I referenced earlier that perhaps it's uh, over analysing analysis paralysis to to do this, but look that's fine if you are a supremely cool and natural instinctive uh, romantic uh, Casanova seducer such that you you know the, the, just the conversation the text just bubble off naturally and everything falls into place and you can go out on a date and bang you back to your flat boom yeah you wouldn't be watching be honest with yourself you wouldn't be watching this vlog if you were perfect seduction machine <laughs> with you um, and quite frankly 95% of the world are, are not probably even 99% of the world are not one of the big things about this stuff is just sucking it up you know taking a good cold hard look at yourself and saying I need to learn I want to learn I'm hungry to get better and, and the way to do it is to uh, use the scaffolding of these sort of texting tools that I'm going to provide you over the coming weeks to actually get in touch if you want to go pseudo spiritual for a moment your true nature as you know the male of a species and that for some reason to do with all sorts of backgrounds and childhoods and a lot of social imperatives and society's conditioning we've kind of forgotten how to do this uh, you know, I like to think that, you know, back in the day when we were cavemen, we kind of instinctively knew what to do. I don't know, perhaps even cavemen need a little bit of texting A to Z from yours truly. But um, 
you can see how it's scaffolding to help you uh, sort of rem remind yourself who you really are that you actually already know this stuff this is why it works because when you you know you, you see something you know read it in a book or you see it on a YouTube video and it you know how it chimes it makes sense it's kind of truthful you think yes that's right that's because you already know so uh, this is just simply about scaffolding that once you've acquired this uh, some skills and texting skills you will be able to dismantle the scaffolding and you'll have a you know a beautiful erect building uh, stood in front of you uh, oh whoops that doesn't sound quite right uh, another analogy that I'm quite fond of is it's a thorn to remove a thorn which uh, I think is actually probably even a biblical but certainly a poetic uh, phrase expression which means that you know you take a thorn if you've got a thorn in your finger you take a thorn to remove it but once the thorn is removed you throw both thorns away so these uh, little texts and tips thorns to remove a thorn that therefore means that ultimately coming back to general rules ultimately uh, there is no prescriptive way of doing it these are tools uh, to, uh, you know, to help you to discover what the real and genuine and natural way of texting should be. Um, and once you, you have arrived in that place, once you are comfortable with text, once you are applying the tips, tricks, the methods, the one-liners, whatever, uh, you will eventually have kind of got into touch with the basic kind of fundamental principles of, of it and you then not need worry and you can never watch you never need watch a, a YouTube video again so yeah, you know I do stress that what you're doing is taking a toolbox that ultimately you won't need to use as much okay so uh, that's all for today uh, don't forget you thought you were going to get away with it out of plug um, next week I will be bringing out part 12 of 52 first dates which is a small, it's a, a small book both uh, print and uh, Kindle versions for 99 pence it's a bargain and that's quite a funky uh, read because I've got a couple of adventures with two Russian girls quite a nice climax to the series after that part 12 I'm going to be doing an epilogue and then bringing out two volumes of both books. Thank you very much for the view reviews. I saw a couple of, a few really nice reviews on 52 First Dates Volume 1 on Amazon yesterday and I hadn't looked at it for a long time so thank you very much for leaving reviews. They are really appreciated. Uh, they help us writers to sell books basically. That's all for today.